intro intro discuss na kagad guys good evening so let us continue about the discussions about the globalization the myth and types of globalization if you remember i have the i had a technicality problem last uh, two days while i'm discussing this one and then after that i uh, discuss no immediately no and if you notice the, we had a partial discussion regarding this topic so we are now in we are now in the subject of philippine politics and governance you know uh let us help each other to understand this one so our topic for today in philippine politics and governance is the meet and types of globalization and you notice there that there is a economic globalization, political and cultural globalization. That's the types of globalization that we are going to discuss. Are you excited guys? Yan, ang maalaga dyan guys, yung ma-appreciate natin yung momentum. Kumain na ba kayo guys? Uh, kumusta? Alam ko yung iba dyan nagpapahinga na and then I would like to call on the attention of my students get your pin and modules as well as your he your listening i want you to listen and then um you may resource uh, research to the other platform or whatever it is books so this would be some sort of an additional uh, information for us to learn huh? So no further ado, let's uh, we start the ado uh, the discussion with this one, guys. All continue discussing this one so our topic as what I'm try uh, I'm telling you is about the globalization if you remember that that the globalization is the process by which ideas goods and services spread throughout the world that is why the involvement of the uh, United Nations that part of the you uh, know the topic about the uh, political globalization so we will emphasize that uh, and then about the business and economic globalization that's just all about trading and then the cultural and then how the different uh, countries influence uh, influence the our country the Philippines about the culture so that is why we must be very particular about it and then insisting of the experts that at least we should have we must have the cultural intelligence so that's the reason that's the very important uh, regarding this one yeah na, okay masaya no let us try ko nagbabago so oh, nagbabago <laughs> so yan guys so in business uh, the terms of in use in an economic context to describe an integrated economic economic remark uh, remarked by free trade so i was asked you about how globalization works is driven by convergence of political cultural and economic system so are we, we are going to discuss that and the flow of knowledge ideas and cultures is expedited through internet communications so this would be about technology so in met globalization that we have the so-called digital communications of a certain villages that is why they are able to understand each other but there is no digital communication in other village so, so uh, therefore they don't have uh, understanding each other 
So that's the very important of the technology and trying to emphasize in the economic globalization that the technology, no? The technology must, uh, must uh, embrace, uh, embraced by the people, embraced by the young man, for us, the, the young people uh, be part of the economic inclusion. So this would not be about the technology that what we provide to our young ones, but uh, they should learn about the technology, how it is uh, operate. So you can give the technology, but they don't know how to operate that. So that's the, the very important. So types of globalization, if you remember, guys, that we discussed the economic globalization, wherein we learned, no? Uh, we learned that uh, there is a forum, no? Forum, business forum. They emphasize that the, the bottom of their discussion is, all about the technology and and economic globalization as we see that this would be about the multinational corporation influencing each other oh, did you remember that S that the the young ones nga, I, I was I, I, I as what I am telling you that uh, the technology is be part of their daily life interaction and also uh, economic globalization wherein we have the multinational corporation you can see that the multinational corporation influence now dominant the the product and service in the competition so how about the local or domestic product here in our country so how about the price so they are not able to compete the multi multinational corporation if you remember that the economical economic globalization and then the transitional uh, corporation within about the service being offered that the Establish the, 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 the other countries building here in our country about terrain, LRT, some sort of like that bridge building. So, how about the workers here in our country? So, let's say, like, you know, uh, what the project we have in the project of build, build, build. So, or are the workers? Uh, do you think uh, Filipino or Chinese? Chinese. So that's the question. That how economic globalization happens around influence. That's the the issue. Economic globalization about trade of products and service. The the the, the idea there is the influence of the the country to the to the uh, to the other country like us that we borrowed uh, money from the China so the influence of the China as what I'm trying to tell you that the Galunggong that the China is the one who who is uh, supplying us the Galunggong the fish so that's the, the, the reason and then um, in economic globalization as we learned that the young ones must train on the technology <coughs> Uh, the young ones uh, must have the skills not only about the education uh, must have the skills and then uh, the, the entrepreneur you must be an entrepreneur but the question if you are an entrepreneur but there is a multinational company, local business in economic globalization you can see that you are an entrepreneur Th uh, that's good but in several uh, in other country you know the 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 microeconomics no uh, they give e, e finance they practice about the finance they lend money to the small business enterprise to uh, to the future entrepreneur and they give a training to them how the business how to make it be some sort of 
uh, products for you to as your main product so that is why here in the Philippines we have this the right to develop your skills and then learn about the technology about the computer especially now we have the online selling you remember the Shopee in Lazada so how easy right now the transactions buying and selling and the distribution or delivery of the product that is uh, you notice that uh, in your doorstep no? uh, the delivery uh, so the, how the economic globalization uh, happens around the world so if you are aware no the economic globalization here so what is that Deto, yung telecommunication from China right and then also the Starbucks the Jollibee mm, international corporation diba? and then uh, what else that is the economic globalization from the foreign country so those are multinational corporations. So, why, that is why in types of globalization, there is a advantage and disadvantage. And a little later, we will discuss that. So, anything else? Uh, if you, oh, you, you try to see around you what you observe about the economic globalization. The Philippines, no? Uh, the recipients of so far no the, the philippines is the recipients of the finance no in other countries we ask help even the recipients of the the vaccines uh, vaccine of the covid-19 so perhaps there is a procurement of the vaccine so that's how economic globalization because we don't have a, a, we don't have an inventions of the vaccine so because uh, we are really rely or expect from the other countries aside from the donation so we purchase probably from the other countries so how dominant the other countries in terms of economic globalization the pharmaceutical multinational corporation so anything else about the economic globalization so anything else if you can see if there is an investors that want to invest here in the Philippines although the uh, we have the we have the uh, several laws that protectionism to the economic of the Philippines uh, protectionation to the local businesses here in the Philippines that is why we, we give a tarifa high fin uh, uh, here, uh, final tax rate to the foreign country or per foreign businesses that establishing business here in the Philippines mataas yung tarifa because we give protectionism to the local businesses here in the Philippines Although the fact that the multinational corporation uh, bring uh, employment in our country, but how about the the entrepreneur, the small player in the competition? Competition. That's uh, that's the very essence of the economic globalization. Shows disadvantage. Ang apektado dyan yung mga small players, the local businesses. That's the economic globalization. So, yeah, the, the, the political globalization, how do you understand the political globalization, guys? These types deals mainly with policies designed, facilitate international trade and commerce. The same about the business. It also deals with uh, 
the institution that implement these policies, which can include national governments as well as international institutions such as the International Monetary Fund and World Trade Organization. That is why, aside from the International Monetary Fund and World Trade Organization, we have the so-called United Nations, World Bank. Uh, what is this all about the political globalization? How do you understand this one? So, in all, uh, in all crises, in a certain country, there is a mediator. That is why we have the United Nations uh, conflicts of the two countries. The United Nations is the mediator. That how political globalization works. Not only about the trade and commerce, about uh, there also about the the crisis, no, the problem. Those political globalization, example United Nations, is part is always part in the solutions for every conflicts of the two countries, and also the political uh, globalization. If you can see, we have the problem here in the in the Philippines about the the former president Ferdinand Marcos uh, during the time happened the the Edsa revolution one uh, correct me if I'm wrong you know the America got him and bring to Boston if I'm not mistaken that's how the political globalization works for the benefit of the country, uh, the alliance, the United Nations, even the ASEAN, if you can see that. The ASEAN, we have an organization here, ASEAN, that whatever the conflicts happening, the ASEAN, not just only about the business, Trans uh, importation and exportation in, in the country. The ASEAN is a uh, part of the uh, uh, the humanitarian action aside from the uh, other humanitarian uh, no, uh, WHO ba? aside from the 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 United Nations. That's how the political globalization works in terms of trade, in terms of commerce, in, ter in terms of policies, in terms of solu giving solution to the problem. And also about the, the sports, no? the ASEAN. No? So, to have the in order to maintain the unifications of the Asian countries, we have any sports. Anything else about the political globalization that you can see during the Holocaust? If you remember that, about uh, our pr late president Manuel El Quezon, no when Adolf Hitler uh, that in the misery life of the Jewish so there were no countries open in favor to uh, open for Jewish except Philippines that is during the Commonwealth president Commonwealth no during that time. I don't know if it is uh, it was uh, 1947 Manuel El Quezon is the, uh, is the president who accept the refugee the Jewish one. Uh, so those refugee, uh, Jewish were the refugee of the Philippines during the Holocaust. So how the how, that's how the political globalization uh, works 
and also anything else that you remember about the political globalization and uh, international monetary fund if you remember that the Philippines during the tenure of the President Ninoy, Ninoy uh, Aquino we have uh, de deposited huge amount to the International Monetary Fund and that the International Monetary Fund is the one uh, facilitate or utilize the money of course in lending to the other countries who in need so we are part of the contributor we are one of the contributor in the international monetary fund so how that's how the political globalization works also world trade organization in terms of businesses we have the billionaire here in the in our country in even other countries you know, helping each other to help the country in terms of the basic needs especially right now we have we are in the amid uh, challenges COVID-19 pandemic so World Trade Organization or even the uh, the first the very first country you now uh, the progressive country has been doing humanitarian action because of the political globalization <coughs> they donate the uh, vaccine no? even uh, in kind and in terms of calamity in terms of uh, for Tito's event other countries donate uh, uh, in kind, not only cast, aside from the cast. So that's how the global, political globalization work. Helping each other or the country. Not only in terms of business, not only in terms of commerce. Yun guys, nung mga importante din na matututunan yun. So, at least you have an idea about the political globalization. Pag tinanong ka, what you can understand the political globalization? To facilitate international trade in commerce. Deals are uh, institutions that implement these policies uh, include national governments as well as international institutions sabi, ganun di ba? importante dyan yung maalala mo dapat pag sinabi yung political globalization the United Nations World Bank, International Monetary Fund World Trade Organization maraming bansa ang mga members dyan na may access dyan that is how the political globalization works whatever the crisis facing by a certain country others countries back up uh, to the in need country who is facing a crisis now that's how political globalization in terms of in kind in terms of cash in terms of health issue in terms of crisis to give solution that's what I have said, the Holocaust, no? The Jews is our refugee during the president of Manuel L. Quezon. That's how the political globalization... Now, in the contemporary, in the present time, how the political globalization works? In terms of China and Philippines, how is how's the relations of the China and the Philippines? Especially in the issue of um, South in the South 
South China Sea ba? Uh, South Philippine Sea. Uh, yun ba yun? I'm, I'm sorry, eh, nawawala ako sa amin. Yung Iskar Bushul, Bushul, Iskar Bru, Shul, Southeast Asia. Yeah. So, mm, I'm sorry, eh. Yung nasa economic territory so natin. Oh, yeah. That's the issue. Uh, political globalization and O will uh, intervene or O will be the mediator the United Nations of course you uh, in the previous ano, argumentation in international uh, court of uh, uh, law of the sea oh. so that the decision in favor to the Philippines but do you think uh, China acknowledged the decision coming from the, from the from the court international court of law of the sea so we know we know that uh, China did not recognize so that's how the po uh, where is the political globalization there we are waiting to the United Nations to to do an action. We are waiting to the other uh, international institution in order to avoid the the notion about the war. Instead, it's remain no notion, right? So, it's all, therefore, there is no war. Pero it might happen, you know. Pero malayo, nakikita ko. Because of the political globalization. Yan. Yan ang mga sense na we, we can apply in, in, uh, nowadays. Economic globalization, no? balikan natin. Ano mga business na pumapasok dito sa atin? Yung dito nga, na telecommunication. Ano pa? Yung mag-explore ng mga mga ano natin, petroleum, gas. Yung uh, the transitional corporation, yung uh, the, pro the in the program of build, build, build. China is the one who will uh, make the, the the building or the, the transportation uh, project the bridge no we have pogo right now economic globalization that's the issue right now economic globalization so the chinese are the employee in pogo that's how the economic globalization happens right now are you aware with that so you can see globalization globalization how it affects the country especially the third country so the philippines is part of the third country so what we can do that is now we have the so-called cultural globalization that we must we must have a culture intelligence so which means that uh, we must uh, we must know our own culture we must appreciate embrace our own culture so in cultural globalization contradicts in this one about this practice because that we are not uh, we can't deny the fact that other countries influence us even in the primitive time that the Spaniard know about our culture, norms, our beliefs. But in the present no, situation, we have the songs that we patronize from the other countries, the Korean, no, BTS, even the, uh, the foods, no, we we, we 
patronage. Yung chup 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 ba yun? <laughs> yung, yung kuruyang pagkain, yung mga kaang. Kalimutan ko yung pangalan nun. <laughs> Di ba? If you remember that, kung chan chup ba <laughs> Oh, yan. Yung mga pagkain na, tinatangkilik natin. Uh, even the, the, the movies. We much uh, interesting. Uh, we must. Uh, we are more uh, time to devote our time in watching movie, uh, Hollywood <laughs> movie, foreign movie. Even our uh, uh, costume or attire. So we patronize the or includes anything else we patronize the what is that the technology that what we are using in our daily life anything that's the cultural globalization this type focus on the social factors that cause cultures to go to converge such as increase ease of communication and transportation brought about by technology. The reason is the technology. So, uh, cultural globalization is uh, more on about the, the, what of course, the, the culture, the, the means, the ideas, the the this the the your activity in your daily life in your interaction to the people that you are always uh you always uh support or uh accept the the the, from the other culture about their practices even in the classroom you know in cultural globalization that even in your home that your parents teaching you in English so that is why uh, the the curriculum in 21st century have been uh, established that we have the local language wherein uh, teach inside in the classroom. I think from grade 1 to grade 3, there is a linguistic language, correct me if I'm wrong. Your language in your province. No English, no Tagalog. If you are Bisaya, Bisaya. If you are Lokan. That's how cultural globalization, that's the one of the example of the so-called cultural intelligence. Patronize your own culture in terms of foods, in terms of language, in terms of uh, uh, transportation, in terms of gadgets, in terms of your behavior, in terms of the norms and uh, values that's part of the culture so you must be aware in the in, in your area in your village the culture must be preserved that's the cultural globalization changes the local culture your own culture that is why we must preserve it. We must not forget the culture that we inherited from the primitive, from the primitive or ancestors of our country. So you can see the globalization, how the globalization works is driven by the convergence of political and cultural and economic systems that ultimately promote and often necessitate increased interaction, integration, and dependency amongst nations. 
So, nag-umaasa tayo by its ano, sanation, no? We, we depend on the China for whatever the scenario. Uh, we depend on the China about the project, what we have right now in the Philippines about the belt, belt, belt. During this time, the president, our president is Duterte. We are depending to the America to protect us in, in case of war. We depend uh, guns from other countries. That is why we bought uh, guns, even aircraft. And also, guys, um, in economic uh, and cultural globalization, how we can preserve that? At least uh, we practice to preserve our uh, crop our our domestic uh, products not just only about in terms of technology in a primitive time or even in a, in a early time earlier time mga handicrafts natin we patronize the local products that's the cultural globalization will not uh, change our 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 culture we can preserve our culture we teach in the, our home, our child to our children. The, 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 uh, we teach our children to speak our linguistic language, our local language. So it's important to note that all the types of influences are there. For example, economic globalization is made possible by certain liberal trade policies that fall under the category of political globalization. So malaking malaking dimension ang dito sa globalization, ang political globalization. Uh, sabi, cultural globalization is also affected by policies passed in political globalization. So, dominant pa rin ang political globalization. And is affected by economic globalization by the imports and exposure a culture has to other cultures through trade. Minsan about the business, no? Kung sino yung bansa na mayaman, dominante. Dito sa Asia, China, di ba? About the trade, kala ka lang. So, where is now the political uh, globalization? Where is the assistance or the the help in terms of the complex of the two country about the territorial, especially the uh, uh, Scarborough? Right? So it happens that the the. The economic globalization is dominant sometimes to the political globalization. Okay, because like, like China, we will not we, we the China will not lend money to the to the other country if there is a conflict. So where is now the the United Nation? Sino may pera siyang may kapangyarihan? the political globalization nandiyan yan pero minsan wala nang magawa eh cultural globalization kultura don't patronize the products of the other country preserve your culture patronize the local product political globalization minsan di ba ngayon so far sa conflict meron ba intervention meron intervention kaya lang siyempre yung China ina-acknowledge ba nila yung sa decision na doon sa International Court of Law of the City? Hindi. Because of the economic globalization, eh, yung saping trade, yung saping business, multinational corporation, yung saping transitional corporation, meron silang investment sa uh, others' country. Dominant. So now you know, 
the cultural globalization and political globalization, economic globalization. Effects of globalization. The effects of each type of globalization can be felt both locally and globally and can be observed in interaction at every level of society from an individual at the micro level to a society at the macro level. Oh, the individual level includes the way international influence affects ordinary people within a nation or region. The community level includes effects to local or re regional organizations, businesses, and economics. Economies. Economics. The institutional level includes refers to multinational corporations, national governments, and higher education institutions that have international students. At this level, decisions are made that affect the lower level. While the effects of globalization can be clearly observed, analyzing the net if impact of globalization is a complex proposition. As a specific result of globalization are often seen as positive by proponents and negative by critics. Many times, a relationship that benefits one entity may end up damaging another. Good for you, but for others. And whether globalization benefits the world, at large remains a point of contention. Yan ang sabi dyan sa effects of globalization. Uh, examples of globalization. One relevant example of globalization is the existence of multinational corporation. Yun yung sinabi ko yung mga businesses from the other countries. Starbucks. Ano pa, mga business. Jollibee, McDonald's. No pa? The term multinational corporation simply refers to a business that conduct, conducts operation in more than one country. Meron sa Pilipinas, meron sa China, meron sa Vietnam, sa buong Asia, meron, and even in Europe. Example, McDonald's, for instance, is a multinational fast food corporation with 37,855 restaurants spread over 120 countries. Correct me if I'm wrong the figure, ah. territories as of 2018. With the 1.7 million employees, it is the second largest private employer in the world behind Walmart. Walmart. Other examples of multinational corporation include the following. Motor company, Ford, Ford Motor Company. Amazon. And also, um, anything else? Uh, through their expensive presence and influence on social and economic developments in the countries that host them, no. Multinational corporations like McDonald's, Amazon, and Ford are symbolic of the contradictions of globalization. On the other hand, the multinational corporations can bring jobs. You know, sinasabi. And bibigyan naman yan kami trabaho. Skills, so, kasi meron yung corporate social responsibility, nagpapaseminar. And well, to the region, they are in the investing in the local people and resources. Of course, siyempre, kung, yung, kung anong bayan na ah, nagtayo dyan sila ng McDonald's, siyempre may tax yan eh, business permit. On the other hand, multinational corporation can destroy also local businesses. Yung sinabi ko, exploit cheap labor in developing countries and treat in cultural diversity while they do offer benefits to the regions they operate in they are often unsustainable because the loyalty of the corporation ultimately is to its bottom line and not the culture it has integrated itself into binabasa ko man sa nyan at least we we can understand that so let me read this to you about the advantages, advantages of globalization. Proponents of globalization argue that it can solve 
fundamental problems with the advantage to ng globalization, problems with the global economy, such as poverty and unemployment. Tama naman, kasi nag i ang ibang corporation, yung mga multi-corporation, to the other country, especially to the third country, nag-provide ng employment. So, uh, okay, by promoting a free market that benefits rich and poor nations alike. Free trade aims to reduce the amount of trade barriers between nations. A trade barrier is any imposed restriction on international trade, including tariffs and subsidies. This consequently promotes economic growth, creates jobs, makes companies more competitive, and lowers prices for consumers. It also theoretically gives poorer countries an opportunity for economic development through exposure to foreign capital and technology, resulting in conditions that foster an improved standard of living for the citizens of that nation. So understandable naman dito. Nag-create ng job, lalaki yung era ng isang bayan. How about disadvantage of globalization? The biggest disadvantage, the biggest uh, disadvantage of globalization are also its biggest. Uh, the biggest advantages of the of globalization are also its biggest disadvantages. While many proponents view globalization as an avenue for solving core economic problems, critics see it as worsening global inequality. For instance, while some, while some proponents say globalization creates new markets and wealth, and, sabi, and promotes greater cultural and social integration by eliminating barriers, critics blame the elimination of barriers for undermining national policies and cultures and destabilizing advanced labor markets in favor of lower cost wages elsewhere. So similarly, some proponents point to the rising econo economies, economies of poor countries benefiting from companies moving operation, there to minimize costs. Meanwhile, some critics say such moves could lower living standards in developed countries by eliminating jobs. Di ba may nangyari niyan? Yung Japan yata. Even here, I think. Kinua, kinanggal nila yung factory nila sa isang bansa. Anong company? Ford ba? Ano? Industry ba ng sasakyan? So, sayang, no? Mabis uh, sa isang bansa may factory ganun. While proponents focus on the increased trade benefits of political corporation that come from a united global economy, Critics na acknowledge that tightly integrated global economic markets carry greater potential for global recessions. Ito ang advocates of cultural globalization point to improved acknowledgement of human rights on a global scale and shared understanding of our impact on the environment. That is why in uh, cultural uh, globalization, we must be very particular also the environmental globalization. That is why in 1947, 1972, I forget, we have the so-called uh, environmental protection. To protect the environment. While critics decry the create the dissemination of unique cultural identity and languages, especially in the age of social media. Advocates view the increased ability to travel and experience new cultures as, see, as a ceiling point of cultural globalization. However, critics point out that increased travel has the potential to increase the rest of pandemics. With the uh, swine flu, outbreak of 2009 and the coronavirus of 2020-2019 no? serving as two examples of serious disease that is spread to multiple nations very quickly.
So now we learn about the types of the myth and types of globalization. So types of globalization, the economic, polit political, and cultural globalization. So somehow uh, we understand a little bit, and you can uh, you can browse and learn from other sources. Thank you very much. Have a nice day, and ingat po kayo. Subscribe my channel, comment, share. Okay? Babus, ingat.